Hi, I'm James Kotecki. You are in the C-Space Influencer Studio with me here at CES 2019. With us is Sarah Kramer, Chief Client and Operations Officer at Spark Foundry. Thanks so much for coming into the studio today to chat. Yeah, so to you have your logo right there on your vest. That's so when right. people ask you what is Spark Foundry here at CES, what do you say? Um, well, Spark Foundry is uh, part of the Publicis Media uh, Network. Uh, we're one of six uh, media agencies as part of the Publicis Media operation. Um, and uh, we're a global agency, second largest in the U.S., uh, largest Publicis Media agency. And, you know, I would say our core differentiating factor is uh, what we like to say is bringing heat to brands. So um, we are an agency that prides ourselves in having the best talent, delivering the best results for, for clients, and, and we hear that um, back. So um, that's, that's what we tend to talk about. Let's talk about that heat. Yeah. What is the definition of heat? What is it, and does it vary by specific instance and client? Yeah, it does. I mean, uh, bringing heat to a brand means, you know, whatever the key performance indicator is for that brand or that consumer challenge, uh, we are all about delivering on that for our clients. So it's uh, generally business performance, uh, uncovering different consumer challenges that we can find a way to solve for. Um, we also have a proprietary approach to how we solve client and consumer challenges that is actually called HEAT. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a proprietary planning and buying approach to the, the business. So it can mean a lot of different things, but at the end of the day, it means results yeah. and incremental value for a consumer. And the idea of Spark Foundry got me thinking about the idea of light versus heat. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a phrase, there's more light than heat there, or maybe it's the other way yeah. around. But is this the idea that sometimes what you're doing might be overhyped and you want to avoid that and do the substantive thing instead? How do you help clients avoid the hype and do something substantive? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a good correlation. You know, the foundry aspect of Spark Foundry is all about taking metal and steel and melting it down and yeah. into something that's new. And I think when you do that with a business um, and when you do that with a challenge, it means that you have to avoid the bling, you have to avoid the hype. And it means really getting to what's at the root of what we want to accomplish and how do we really think about the challenges that we need to solve for. And um, you know, not being afraid to do new things but not be attracted to yeah. The bling and the lights, as you say. Yeah. So I'm a brand, I'm here at CES, I'm totally overwhelmed by everything around me. Yeah. Guide me through how do I approach uh, looking at all the new technology and trends around me? How do I even get started? Yeah, so when we, when we help clients who are coming here for the first time, it's really important to think about what are the challenges that you as a business have? Um, what are the challenges or the opportunities you have from a consumer perspective? And so what is the type of technology that might open up new doors to growth, that might open up new insights into consumer behaviors? And we customize tours around categories and business opportunities. So I think that's a really important starting point for anybody that's coming to CES, because otherwise it can be overwhelming and you may spend a lot of time seeing things that have no relevance to sure. uh, certainly your business that you'll take back. So can you give me an example of a kind of tour or a kind of theme that somebody on a tour might be might be getting from what they're doing? Um, so I would say, um, you know, certainly in the medical devices. So there's a lot of uh, tours and new technology that's out there in regards to uh, monitoring your health. Mm -hmm. So if you are a brand inside of the, the health space, whether it's an over-the-counter uh, or pharmaceutical uh, brand, um, understanding how wearables are advancing yeah. to help the everyday person diagnose and treat uh, different approaches to improving their wellness. Um, so that's an example of something where we've brought in new clients that are endemic to health and some that are non-endemic to health mm -hmm. to really understand um, how that uh, fascinating area is continuing to change and benefit from new technology. What do you uh, see as far as technology here that makes you or your clients a little bit nervous? Um, well, I would say any kind of technology that, to our earlier point, uh, has the bling or the flashy aspect to it, mm -hmm. but is non-transparent, uh, perhaps doesn't provide the level of exposure to uh, understanding how it's going to work for your business or your brand, sure. is certainly a technology that feels like on the surface, it's something that wants to be sold, but doesn't really have a premise for how it's solving for a brand or how it's solving for a consumer challenge. And so I always say, if you're looking at technology, you've got to be sure, first of all, it's meeting an unmet need for the consumer. Mm. Um, and it's something that's incremental in value. 
Uh, it's got to be something that's scalable. It can't be a one-time, um, you know, wonder. Um, so it's got to be scalable to your business or scalable to the consumer opportunity, and certainly cost plays into it. So those are kind of the three areas that I think are really important to play into it. And if it was easy to solve for that equation, everybody would do it, right? right? So obviously right. it takes a certain amount of experience. Have you, been, have you been coming to CES for a while? Yeah, almost 10 years now. So, um, and we have a variety of clients and categories that love to experience the floor and the custom programs that we put together. Um, so it's always a great experience, a great place to connect and uh, network as well. If my uh, LinkedIn resume searching is right, this is your 25th year in the industry. That's right. And so what yeah. has not changed in that time? And by implication, what will remain true yeah. in the future? Yeah, I think it's a good question. Um, for me, the thing that has stayed consistent throughout everything that certainly I have experienced and led over my career is the focus on the consumer, the focus on people. And uh, when you start with a business challenge and you're starting with an understanding of people, it should guide everything that you do. And I think that holds true for technology because we see a lot of technology out there that certainly didn't seem like it had a lens of the consumer in mind. Mm -hmm. And I would say that plays into my day-to-day -day, uh, aspect from you know, a job perspective can as you well. Can you give me an example of a technology that failed to meet that consumer threshold? Um, kind of a, well, with? there is certainly something out there uh, right now that is uh, you know, a beautiful clothes folder, you know, right now okay. that uh, folds clothes and it's, uh, um, so amazing to watch and look at, but it's incredibly expensive, it's big and bulky. Um, so it was something that I noticed that uh, certainly is a great idea and a great, yeah. uh, you can see the value it could bring, but it's not at a price point, it's not at a convenience standard right. that I think will get a consumer to actually lean in and pay for that. Once it can wash dishes as well, maybe, That's we, can, right. maybe we can start having a conversation at that That's point. That's right, yeah, um, yeah. So this is 2019. I can't believe it's 2019, but yeah. here we are. Yeah. Uh, fill in the blank for me. It's time to stop blank and start blank. Yeah, so um, at Spark, we, um, we pride ourselves on um, really thinking through, again, that consumer aspect to everything that we do. And that has led to a lot of unique approaches to content development. We now have over 150 people that are dedicated to content development that services new value areas for consumers. And so if I were to say, what is one thing that uh, I think we should stop focusing on is testing in that content space. You know, In the era of AI and in the era of searchable content out there, as marketers, um, we know it works. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's an important stage for us to look beyond testing new content approaches because we've got a lot of great content out there that's coming through multiple devices and experiences. And a brand really needs to be thinking about that now. And if they haven't, um, you know, uh, people are going to be ha have more access to content in the future. So how do we get brands uh, ahead of that curve versus behind. Sure, and gosh, every brand, every marketer wants more great content That's in right. their arsenal, right? How do you combine technology, AI, machine learning, data-driven things with human creativity? Where do you see that balance, and do you see a shift happening maybe more towards the, uh, as, the as AI and machine learning starts to uh, become more and more useful in creating that kind of thing? Yeah, I think that, um, I mean, I think it's always going to be a balance between the two because I think as we learn more about the content, uh, the consumers that matter to our brands the most, um, as we start to learn more about which content is uh, driving more engagement, et cetera, it's going to help us to adapt that content over time. So I don't think there will ever be an either or equation to that. Um, but what's important, again, as I have continued to say, is what do we want to accomplish as a business? What is the consumer need state? Yeah, and yes. it's funny, that's such yeah. an obvious question in yeah. some ways, but it's the question that you have to right. keep deliberately asking, otherwise it just slips that's away right. and you get distracted by the shiny self-driving robot that that's got hit right. by the, the self-driving car folder. or yeah. whatever it might be. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> that's right. exactly. That's right. Final thoughts, what are you excited about for 2019? Um, for 2019, I'm, I'm excited for what's ahead in the AI space. I'm excited for 
you know, really driving that intersection of brand and consumer experiences via, you know, a lot of great technology that's out there, a lot of great new um, platforms for, for brands and consumers to see incremental value. So I'm really excited for uh, the advent of that and to see it really integrated into the way we operate on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, we'll have you back and we'll talk about how it progressed. That's right. Uh, Sarah Kramer, Spark Foundry, thanks so much All for right. joining me. Thank you. And I was really glad to be here. They're very good. And thank you for watching the C-Space Influencer Studio here at CES 2019 with me, James Kotecki. Keep it right here because more great conversations are just ahead.